Tara, he was pretty pretty sincere about it. It was a frank and honest conversation about how he's been playing. Now, I think the recognition is good in having some self-realization that he is struggling. And and so that it's not like um, people are looking at things unfairly, that he does have to play better. That, to me, is encouraging. But some of the things that I heard him say during that availability in terms of saying, I feel like I've been right in the area on a lot of plays, but I just can't quite get there. Um, it, it, it spoke to me like a player who is grappling with not just any some sort of physical decline, but some confidence issues. And that, I think, especially at cornerback, where you think of it as, you know, you're on an island and these guys have to be able to um, to kind of brush off their failures or their defeats quickly and move on to the next play and and believe that they can lock uh, uh, the, the, the receiver up again. I mean, that's that's where confidence and, and your, your, your the mental strength and wherewithal really comes into play. And so if he is facing a crisis of confidence I do think that's an issue. I can't say it for sure just because I'm not in his head, but just in listening to him talk and then watching him play, I think that not only is he not playing well, he knows he's not playing well, and there's a a frustration and either a lack of belief or something else inside there that is playing games with him internally. And I think that does not bode well, I think, for him being able to magically turn a corner and, and sort of find the secret sauce to get back to what he was in 2017. And if he's lost a step, maybe there is no way he gets back to it. Yeah. And, and, and the thing is, he's a big, strong guy. And the problem is when he tries to use his physical strength rather you know, to make up for whatever else he's lacking, he tends to get penalties. So he's kind of stuck. That's right. And, and you know, this is a guy who has physically dominated his position when he's been at his best. And if he can no longer do that, that's when you see players like Terrence Newman who find a way to compensate for the declining physical skills with an increased awareness, a better, you know, Antoine Winfield was another one just uh, more studying on tendencies and, and, and being able to read things and be able to move quicker and expect and anticipate things that are going to happen to allow you to get into position um, it, when otherwise you might be a step behind. And so it would require, you would think, him really kind of getting and studying and and getting a different and, and a higher plane of grasp of, of the game and his opponent than he appears to have right now to compensate for um, what he is losing in the physical part. Let's wrap up with a, an appreciation of Daniil Hunter. Once again, thank you to everyone who listens to Talk North. Check out our new Gopher show at TalkNorth.com. Subscribe in your favorite podcast app. Follow us on Twitter at TalkNorthPod. And thanks to our sponsors as well, Twill and Tony Hoagland. Daniil Hunter, youngest player ever to reach 50 sacks. Uh, he is a remarkable physical specimen. He is a very nice young man. He is in incredible shape. You know, I hate to even say this, but – you know, given good health, which is a huge factor in every NFL career, I mean, this guy could do really remarkable things. I mean, he's already done them, and, and yeah, yeah it, it all shapes up for an incredibly bright future for him. Um, you know, you, you're right, he's he's chiseled from granite. I mean, he has one of the most imposing physiques that you could ever see on an NFL player, but there is, there does seem to be something else inside of him that is kind of helping him go from just a guy who looks really tough and and looks really ferocious into just a complete player. Um, you know, we've seen our fair share of of guys who come through the league who can lift a bunch of weights and get themselves in great shape, but when it comes to actually executing on the field, that's more difficult. I mean, Jared Allen was not a guy who was you know, just like Adonis out there. I mean, he was a guy 
who was more was a little bit leaner, but used his speed and used his uh, intelligence and and to to play games with uh, offensive linemen and set them up for moves later in um, later in the game and 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 all of these things. And I think you're starting to see Daniel Hunter do some of that already at such a young age. And so if you think of if he's already starting to think the game, uh, you know, like a like an elite pro, think of what's going to happen over the next two, three, four years as he just gets more and more um, uh, grasp of the opponents that he's facing, of the techniques that he can kind of deploy that are at his fingertips. And and then he puts that together with just the incredible physical gifts that he has. I mean, it's going to be incredible. It it really is a sky's the limit type of a situation for Daniel Hunter. I mean, he is still so young, Jim, uh, that it, 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 it just as long as he stays healthy, which he has done a good job of to this point, knock on wood. I mean, you, you just wonder about where he's going to end up on some of these lists. Absolutely. And, uh, you know, I, I got to talk to him as a rookie and he told me about growing up in Jamaica and he's, and he repeated it yesterday. He said, you know, they get up every morning, just go outside and run, swim, invent games, jump off rooftops, climb trees, and never played a video game, never sat inside the house, you know, being bored or moaning. They just went out and did stuff. Uh, it, it's a remarkable story, and he's a, he's a really cool guy as well. Hey, thanks to everyone who listens. Uh, again, check out our new Gopher show, which is going to, you know, this time of the year, it's going to be a, a lot of Gopher basketball, but also Gopher football and other Gopher sports. Uh, check it out. Check out the rest of the network. We appreciate your listening, and we'll talk to you next week. <laughs>